trapping on the old river country that's far and still here. Listen, if you want to hear the rest of the song, y'all make sure y'all tap in with Viral Beats. That's with three eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, three eyes. Hania Glenn. Could Be Trapping is the name of that song by Viral Beats, local native to Jacksonville, Florida. I got Kayla in the building today with me. Hi. As y'all may know, I've shouted out before. Kayla helped me design my wall. Cause I uh I just didn't know where to start and uh it's been it's been set up the same ever since. <laughs> uh how you doing, Kayla? I'm doing pretty good. I really appreciate you having me here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So Kayla uh reached out to me the other day and she said, I'm proud of you, bro, but uh when you gonna have some women on? And I didn't even, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the problem with us men, man. We don't even won't even be thinking about the ladies, bruh. So this is episode 14. So as of now, any any women that want to come on, you know, y'all tap in. Uh, I promise I have a cool, calm, collective, professional side of me as well. Most of the people I have on here, I already, I already know. So we be cutting up. But also, <laughs> I already know her and uh, we be cutting up. So really do. It ain't going to be different <laughs> on this episode. But I promise, you know what I'm saying? Ladies, you're welcome uh, to come through. Uh, anybody who does anything in the city. Would you like to tell the people what you do? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So um, my name is Kayla, as you guys may or may not know. Um, I make glueless wigs. So you don't like dealing with glue or gel like I don't because that's not my forte. I make glueless wigs. I make them on the sewing machine. So I don't do them by hand. Um, I took a class to learn how to do it on the sewing machine. So it makes it that much faster and I also do readings in my spare time I've tapped into like spiritual gifts over the years so that's really what I've been working on and yeah that's about it my dog geek (laughs) yeah man so yeah we gonna uh, we gonna cover those things and then we also gonna get into you know the personal relationship between me and Kayla we uh we go have fun a lot you know what I'm saying? Really always, do. always have a, a little turn time. You know what I'm saying? When we step out, um, and that's why we chose uh, viral beats because we went to uh, a Saruta. show at Myth. Yeah, we Saruta. saw Saruta. And really, bro, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Saruta, man. Yes, but really, definitely. like viral, like for me, like just the feeling that I got from the music for real, bro. Viral, viral was the star of the night for real, man. I was definitely surprised. I had no idea about viral because like I love the dubstep scene. And I think the first show we went to, who was that? What was the first show we went the to? The very, very first show. Because I think I we went to, to one at Myth. Did we? Before or was the first show we went to? The only show we've been out of town to is uh Excision. Yes. At House of Blues. But I don't think that was that the first show we went to? I think it was. Yeah, was it really? I think it was the first show because you were a little tad apprehensive and I was like, it's okay, bro. Come on. Like, we're going to have a good time. And like, I had a blast. But when I look back and saw C, he was like more turnt than I was. I was like, bro. Oh, yeah. No, nah, I, was, I was I was going at that show, man. I was I was I felt like I was a raver. Like I've been in that atmosphere before. And uh, I was out there a bit head banging. You know what I'm saying? My dog. Mosh pitting. My dog said you got to get on the front and. Yeah. 
swing your head and shit. I've been my back been bothering me lately. I was uh you probably- at the other show <laughs> at the other show, bro. When we went to Saruta, like I couldn't I couldn't even headbang out that bitch, bro. I just had to chill. That's what I'm saying. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I had no idea viral was that lit. He was really my favorite part of the show. Like I'm not even gonna cap. I was like, this guy got skills, and he has a wide range of. EDM he listens to yeah. like he mixes like deep medi but he also mixes like house music and it's like a really really decent blend like I enjoy that <laughs> yeah nah he Josh special man oh I don't people know his name Josh right. that boy viral special man <laughs> for real for real um when did you get into that scene because that's that's your that's your thing for real like nine times out of ten when I be around you you be playing I know you listen to rap a I do lot. But I do. like whenever I be around you and we be in a car, like most of the time you got, yeah. you got, you got the dub dub going on. So how did you get into like EDM in general? Um, I was in college and I met one of my best friends, Inez. You remember Inez, right? Yeah. And um, I met Inez because at the time I was racing cars in college, shout out Import Dreams. We were racing cars, you know, and one of my homeboys, DeAndre, he was like, I got a homegirl I think you would like to meet. You know, she's real cool. So I met up with Inez. And Inez took me to EDC in 2015. That was like my first, first show. But it was like on a festival scale. You know, like it's not like I went to like many shows like they do at Myth. So my first show was like EDC and I just like fell in love. Like it's a completely different culture, you know. When you live in a world every day that you have to deal with like humans, <laughs> it, it's nice to go out and see people be their weird, quirky selves without judgment. Like if we lived in a world without judgment, I think people at EDC, how they dress, the characters, that's how the world would look on an everyday basis. So I could go out there, free my mind, chill and do my thing. And then... I was like, you know what? I think I like music without words. <laughs> I, sometimes I do not like, I, I don't want to hear what people have to say on the mic. And that sounds really bad. I oh, feel no. the sounds more than anything. So sometimes in the dubstep, if you hear like a womp, 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 and it's like, brrr, and then your whole body is like, hmm. I want <laughs> I'm trying to feel the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I feel like music expresses us in ways when we can't express ourselves. So sometimes I just need something that expresses how I'm feeling. So after that, I kind of started exploring like my own lane of dubstep. I kind of like the deep, dark, dangerous vibes. Um, more so like I like the London grime scene too. Shout out Bristol. You guys make great music over there. And I think I've been dubbing and raving and head banging and mosh pitting ever since. Uh, <laughs> so EDC was your first show. That's, Very first. That's, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've been to. I've been to TSI before, so I'm sure I, I was at a show and just didn't understand it at the moment or I wasn't into it. Mm -hmm. But the the. Like the best show I've ever been to that I for sure can remember it being my first is ours when we went to Excision. Yeah. Like that shit. If y'all, y'all, for you, those of y'all that don't know about the dubstep and EDM stuff, like Excision is to dubstep, he's like the underground Skrillex. Like he, he's big, but he, like, you don't hear Excision on the radio and stuff like yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? Nah. He's like the king of the underground type right. shit. Like, and I'm not saying he's the best, but he's like one of the most known. Like he, he throws very big festivals. Yeah, like, okay, say for instance, if you know who Skrillex is, most people know who Excision is. They're kind of like on the same level, you know, but then when you start getting into guys like, you know, Space Jesus, Liquid Stranger, they make music that we like to kind of call space bass because it sounds like really out of this world. That's when people kind of get like, okay, I don't even know if I want to go that deep into it, but it brings out the best in me. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, nah. That shit. That shit was uh, what the show we saw. Who is that? Excision. Dion Timmer. Dion Timmer and Liquid Stranger. 
Oh, nasty. oh, so oh, so Liquid Stranger was there when we were there. Okay, nasty. I didn't remember that. Damn, mm-hmm. I'm gonna remember that now since we talked about it here. Yeah, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't remember that because I know that name now. I don't. I don't like listen to it. I listen to the mm-hmm. playlist that you send me. Um, Shout out Deep Dark and Dangerous. Yeah, and by the, by the way, you know what I'm saying y'all y'all can tap in with my dog SoundCloud. I'll, I'll include that in the uh, in the video and the link too. And uh, she got playlists on uh, SoundCloud. My dog. My dog know her music, bro. Like she could, she get Listen, you right in any, any situation. I had DJ dreams. I still do, you know. But I'm momming right now. But literally, I I see myself playing the music people want to hear. I still go out today as an adult and hear the music that I heard like 15 years ago, you know. But I'm I'm happy for people. Um, like fourth quarter Quan and sounds by Josh Luna XL. What you guys are doing is like amazing. It's nice to hear different music out and about, but I do feel like there's also other music that people need to tap into. And I feel like it'll also change the scene of the city to kind of get people to open up and want to try new things, bring different events to the city, things like that. Yeah. I was saying with the, uh, Sadly, I'm gonna I'm put some sad music behind this right now. Doo, doo, doo. We are gonna have to wave goodbye to 1904 Music Hall as a music venue. Um, sad to say, I I feel like personally, like for like the underground for the concerts, like it's it's the best. Uh, Ben threw a show there that was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I mean, a lot of people throw shows there, and it's just got a good feeling. You know, you you go out back and you know roll your one, get your get mm-hmm. right. Can't do it inside, but and then they upgraded to a full bar. But they're gonna be leaving now, so they're passing all their business over to Underbelly, um, which is a smaller music venue. Which uh, I can't remember if I've been in there or not. I want to say I went to see Underachievers there, but it really? might it might not have been Underbelly though. I just know it's on Bay Street. But um, they passed that on. So I was talking, uh, I was just like on Twitter with uh, Flash, you know, Flash Mm-mm. the Samurai from uh, Love Culture. Mm-mm. You know, Spirit, Nick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The group he's in. Oh, okay, Flash okay. is also gotcha, in Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So um, I was talking to him, Brad, and I'm like, Brad, because he said he ain't really like too much care for 1904 personally. Yeah. And I just was like, bro, we need to, we need to get a venue. Like we need yeah. to come together and figure it out like because somebody like me bro like i'm not yes i see long-term investment you know what i'm saying we're gonna make some money bro but i'm not worried about the money bro i want to give up give the culture here a place to be a safe place to be and i mean because i'm tapped in with the edm world and then i'm tapped Mm -hmm. in with the rock world i went and see my homie uh, rock band the perfect person yeah bro i'd like to just 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 the heads up for anybody man i would love to be a part of any like new venue ventures i'll sign ndas like whatever um i'd love to be a part and see how we can help that's the whole point of why i started this podcast is just to give people a platform so i'd love to give people like an even bigger platform to perform their craft instead of just yeah. also talk about it. And I mean, it would just open a lot of places. I'd probably like if, if I had a venue as a part of, I'd pick, I'd pick that to do this at like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'd, I'd set up there to do this. And what? I, if I, if I had a place to do this at like a studio or something, I'd do so much more. Like I would, yeah. I would 12 hour a day. I'd, yeah. I'd, co- I'd have people coming in three, three a day, whatever, mm-hmm. like really getting it in. But because this shit, you know what I'm saying? It's within my house. I'm not, I'm not open to just having anybody here. So yeah, you got to keep everybody that, space. that keep requesting to come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm very selective with who I'm, who I'm going to let over here at the moment. Um, He's going to get right though. But like I, I promise. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. But like I said before, I'll pull up on you. Yeah. I'll pull up on you for real. Like you just, you have a location and I'll bring my equipment and we could do it that way. And that aspect, everybody's welcome. Anybody tap in as long as you know, you ain't got no problem with my people or I ain't got no problem with you. Like, you straight for real, cause it, it's some, it's some people in the city. You know what I'm saying? They've been acting funny, bro, and, and that's within uh, that's within all communities, bro. I've been I've been peeping a lot of shit, bro, but it ain't it, it ain't nothing to be to be pressed about for real, bro. But like, y'all know who y'all are, and don't think y'all could come around around here and like eat off of this now, like. Yeah. This is all for love, bro. Any any vultures, bro? Like we ain't fucking with that shit. Yeah, and you want to know something, like. I've been realizing over like the last past couple months, because I've been really to myself 
it's okay to protect something that's yours without feeling bad about it and cut people off, especially if you feel like they're moving funny. We're grown. You know what I'm saying? You either want to be a part of something or you don't. But I just want to let everybody know it's really obvious when you move shysty around people. You may think it's not, but people see through that. So when you're dealing with people, make sure you watch yourself and keep it G at all times. 100%. 100%. My brother's certified around here in these streets, okay? Just want to let y'all know. But um, let's uh, let's let's take the focus back. We kind of got in talking right. about the it's city. Okay. Let's get back into <laughs> to, into Kayla. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, uh, do you feel like you found? So you said what? 2016 is when you went to EDC or 15? 2015. Okay, so 2015. Yes. That was about eight years ago. Yes. I would say from my memory, you weren't like you know super into like the spiritual spiritual. No, okay, I wasn't. So do you feel like the the festival scene kind of pulled you in? I to, do. I do. Okay. So 2018, I went to Zen Awakening in Orlando, me, Inez, and my ex-boyfriend at the time. And it was a very transformative trip. This was more so on the meditative side of the EDM world. Um, So they were out there doing sound bowls. They were doing meditation. We were literally in the woods for like three days just earthing. You know what I'm saying? And at one point during the night, we were walking around the woods and we found a real live active drum circle. I'm talking about like, and I'm like, it's a fire pit out here. Like just stumbled across. That I shit. promise you, That's I was cool. on another planet. I was like, I'm no longer on earth, like <laughs> out of there, you know? And then like the next day is, It's different being around people who are on the same vibe. They just want love and peace and happiness for everybody. So I'm, I wasn't used to receiving that kind of love. I was kind of like put off by it at first. Cause I'm like, don't be touching me. Like you got cooties. I don't know. You you know what I'm saying? (laughs) But I realized a lot of people are just like concerned for humanity in the EDM world. I know they get like a lot of bad rep more so like, oh, it's just nothing but like drugs, partying, all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But realistically, that's kind of like how I tapped into my spirituality. I was laying on, um, it wasn't a hammock, but it was like attached to a tree, like a little chair thing or whatever. And I was laying there and I was just looking up at the trees and I was like, everything is one. I don't know why. It was just a thought that came through. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even remember what I was going through at the time, but I was like, hey, everything's going to be okay. I went home and I think my cousin, maybe like a couple of weeks later, sent me something by the hood healer. Um, Imani Cohen, shout out to the hood healer. She literally was who jump started me on my spiritual journey. You know, it was one of those things like you ever had somebody give you like real raw, like, Hey man, you fucking up. You need to tighten that shit up. I don't know what you out here doing, but you're being embarrassing. Yeah. And it hit home. Like you're not around here acting like you're deserving. And that's why you don't have. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> I'm a, I'm an older sibling, you know what I'm saying? So like I literally have to walk through earth figuring this stuff out on my own for the most part. I don't have like a OG to be like, how does this go? You know, I'm like trial and error and then I got to pass it on to my siblings. So they're not out here being embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So like I just started, she was like, she did a reading and you know, readings are kind of like sketching the community. People are like witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Like you be working with the devil, all types of weird stuff. So I was like, I don't know. Something about it felt right. That was the first thing that it felt right in a long time. I just graduated college. I have a degree in psychology. Shout out Bethune Cookman. Definitely a wildcat. And I didn't do anything with my degree at all. And I felt like it was a waste of time at the time um I really felt like college was pointless you know because I tried to go work 
with kids and I just couldn't take kids away from their parents. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of shifted what I was doing. And once I kind of saw her do a first live reading for Sagittarius and it was definitely the first thing that got like hit home. She was like, you could do this too. I got ridiculed by all types of people. Like you don't need to do that. That's witchcraft. You're going to hell, 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 hell. And I'm like, bro, like this feels right. This is the only thing that feels like it's giving me clarity walking through life. You know what I'm saying? So my parents were a little apprehensive too. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to keep doing this. A couple of months went by, years went by. My mom finally told me, well, you know, one of your great, great grandmas used to read tea leaves. And I'm like, so you knew it was like up in me. Like you just in here playing, like you don't know what's up. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like stop playing with me, mom. Shout out to mom. But I've been doing reading since. So I started doing readings in 2020. Literally, I was in a situation where I had to move. I had a four month old. I was living on the West side. I was like, I, I can't raise my kid over here. You know what I'm saying? So I start tapping into my bruja energy, um, spiritually cleaning my house, doing readings, that kind of thing. And People were like, you don't even know me and you know my life. Like, who are you talking to? Like, I almost fell out with one of my friends because she thought that somebody was like telling me her business. And I'm like, it just comes automatically. So I've been doing reading since 2020. Um, I I think uh, I recently did readings for Khan and Neek when we were at Archetype. I think that's what that was. Remember when we went there? And you got the cool jewelry. Who uh yeah, I lost that ring, bro. I, mean, oh I spent like 80 God, bucks on that ring, dog. bro. Are you serious? Yeah, bro. I spent 80 bucks on that ring and that did <sighs> barely even fit. But I really liked it. Like I it really, was really nice. Like it had like a really big like crystal on it. Had a top. garnet. Yeah, it was garnet. That's why I got it, because that's my birthstone. But uh I'm sure it's in this house somewhere, bro. I'll be <laughs> I'll be losing shit in the crib for real, bro. I'll be blowed. Uh shit, I'm blowed now. Uh Peace. That coffee, boy, that coffee is hitting. Yeah, right that's on. why I'm sitting there like... Guess what? Guess what? I got another cup, too. Please. I made two cups. Well, please make sure I leave before your stomach starts doing the... Oh, no, 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 no. That'll be later. That'll be later. That is, I did tell her before we started. That's why, that's why yeah, I made some coffee. Yeah, he around here looking at me, acting like he don't know what I'm <laughs> talking about. But if I get to smelling something around here, I promise you, I will get up in the middle of this podcast and we go... <laughs> <laughs> I had a big ass uh, bacon or chicken bacon ranch quesadilla homemade. You know what I'm saying with some with some fried cabbage with some bacon. So yeah, cause I was full, bro. I was like, I have some coffee right quick. Give me give me a little boo boo. Yeah, <laughs> y'all yeah. see what I have to go through. Who was the uh, who was the featured artist at that show that we did? Neek and Khan, Khan oh. and Neek. Oh, yes. that's the people. I yes. see. But remember, I had never heard. Yeah, of them. he's not again. Bristol. London dubstep deep medi. I'm gonna have him drop my SoundCloud in here because I promise you, just go down my likes list. You won't have to search for anything. Just play. I promise anything you'll like. But Con and Neek, that's who we went to go see. Yeah. If it was more people at that show, it definitely would have been lit, but he's not that yet into the deep, dark, and dangerous vibes. Yeah. I'm working on it though. Yeah, I'm still I'm still getting there. Couple things for we got a we got a couple seconds for the a uh, couple minutes for the segment over. Uh so you had said that you almost fell out with somebody because they felt like you was talking to somebody when she did my reading. So she does my girl retwist. Uh, oh, my, my I girl, do. My girl got dressed. <laughs> yeah, I do so do locks. She she did my girl my girl hair, and then we did a tarot reading, and I asked her. I was like, bro, like. You been talking to Bay? <laughs> like, like what? Is, like, so yeah, it it do it do be it do be there. Uh, and then Ben's got a reading at uh, Archetype as well. And Ben's came back to me. He was like, "Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like that shit. That shit was true. And that shit." <laughs> like, so, and I, I'm not even like you know. Most people think like when you do because I mostly do oracle cards. A lot of people do tarot as well, but I tap into oracle cards, and a lot of people think it's 
will I get married in five years? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> that's that's not what it is. This ain't no psychic. Cause. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I am, but we ain't doing yes or no like that. Like we're really about to get into your life, but that's a whole nother. Hello. Oh, yeah. And we're gonna get in. We're gonna, <laughs> we gonna get into uh to a live tarot. Oh no 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 no, no. oracle mm-hmm. reading. Yeah, a live you got it. oracle reading. All same love. We be I bite. Duval County baby. We just okay. So. Pick a deck. Pause. I'm tripping. Before we start this, I have to thank my ancestors and spirit and the universe. Else this won't go right. All right, let's get into it. All right, go ahead and <laughs> pick a deck for me. Whichever one you want. I like I like the pictures on this one. Which one? Black Moon. This one? Yeah, I like Ooh. I like that picture right there. This? Yeah. The, the, <laughs> no, the one down here. I'm crying. I don't know. It was speaking to me. It looks you know, very... That's my white uh, ancestors. I was about to say, y'all, look, I didn't want to say it, but he opened the door. It looks very uh, conquering of the people on this, but that's not what that is. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. It looked very of, of that was me, not him. That was very um we're coming to get you. All right. Hold these. Okay. Hold them. Feel them. Get into it. Okay. Yeah. Just put everything you've been feeling recently in there. All right. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want you to think about it, okay? What do you mean, don't think about it? Like, just answer it? Yes. Okay. Pick a number four through nine. Seven. All right. Thank you. Just vibe out. I'm gonna prepare. Good vibes, good vibes. This is on my SoundCloud. This is Ashes. Find this on the deep, dark, and dangerous SoundCloud. Great mix. Duh. All right, I'm gonna push this to the side, but I'll make sure I'll lean in if need be. Got anything that you want to ask, or you just want me to kind of do my thing? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like an overhead film of what you're doing and plug it in. To the video later. All right, do your thing. Wubby. 
it's funny because every time I pull cards for you and I see something root related, I'm like, you got black ancestors somewhere in your lineage. <laughs> hey, 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 she said it, not me. <laughs> Struck by the double edged sword of knowledge, I'm lost, but I never get bored of love. Here on the bedrock's more than solid, but the truth so heavy weighs all too much. Out in the cold with the rain, no stop, keeps crashing down. I'm I ain't gonna lie, my arms hurt, so I'm not gonna do that. I already know, but <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll do a face up. We'll show people what we're doing. Calm when life gets hectic, handle the flame, I spark that bud. Mark my words, we're making trees from stumps, and woods get chopped. Do good, then what? Hope it's gonna end up in the box, so we can't get lost. Trying to dance with lost. I'm finding things that I didn't know I could find Put down that port but I'm back on the grind It's a matter of time before I get mine But now I've been thinking about, thinking about you lots Got too much on my mind Too much of the time and the thoughts don't stop I've been Say it's seven, right? about all our shared experiences And how weird it is that these fears exist It's so drunk that I can't take serious I've been I can see your face I don't wanna have head. to I can see my life past and present Get on I don't you. know what the future says I've been I'm pulling an extra one just for good faith. Spirit said two more. Cause what are you doing? Don't get break. All right. So we're going to get into it. Okay. If you feel like something, I have to have your permission for me to do this in front of everybody. This is okay with you, right? If I feel like it gets a little too, mm, I'm a, I'm talk to you outside, bro, man. Okay. Oh no, I'll just say something <laughs> if I feel like it's going too far. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Okay. No. Nah. <clears throat> or if it's that bad, then we'll cut it. No, nah, I mean, <laughs> it's not even. No, I'm just saying though. Like, no, no. Nah, nah. Do, yeah, do, yeah, do yeah. your experience. Like, don't. I got you. Okay. All right, so you asked for seven cards. So these are the seven cards that I just happened to pull out, okay? So the first card that we are going to start with is the root card and the escape card. Both of these cards are in the upright, okay? The type of reading that I did or the way that I laid the cards out is pretty much a, um, how can I say this? what the future may hold if you do or do something if you do or don't do something if that makes sense you know what i'm saying like i tell everybody you could have whatever you want in the universe but if you don't put your mind to it like you should it's not going to fruition like it should so i'm gonna change the vibes just a little bit okay all right so with this, what you're doing, your business, what you're doing for the city, you are planting roots that have never been done. We live in a city where everything is pretty much a crab pot. People are trying to fight to get to where you need to go, but you have opened up a podcast where people can be themselves and also plant their own roots. You know what I'm saying? This is going to help you escape the life that you have now to where you won't have to do so much, if that makes sense. You could focus on one thing. You know what I'm saying? But this is the thing. There are things that are currently blocking you to reach that level of escapism you're trying to reach, if that makes sense. So say, for instance, we all have an imaginary place in our mind that we go to if things were perfect and everything was how it's supposed to be. That's obtainable. You know what I'm saying? But realistically, you have to go with the flow with a lot of things. You have to own the things that you've done, not good or bad. You know what I'm saying? But just accountability. 
a lot of times people have a hard time taking accountability not saying that you do but I do. Account- <laughs> well he does okay well you gonna have to take some accountability about some stuff you know what i'm saying there are people in your life who really love you really care about you really want to see you succeed and you can't focus on peons for lack of better terms you gotta be tunnel vision with the shit once you become tunnel vision with the shit and you literally focus on you and yourself because you are the type that will put everybody on i want to see the same for you you know what i'm saying yeah, you're not the I, first person to say that yeah to me neither. <laughs> i, I want to see people repost your stuff just as much as you repost everybody's and i'm talking about you repost it so effortlessly it's, it's love it's, it's automatic for you And you deserve that same kind of love But guess what You have to be willing to set Boundaries When people disrespect That kind of love That you deserve You know what I'm saying So When you start entertaining Not even saying that you're entertaining But it does get to you It bothers you Because you are such a loving person That's blocking you from transforming this into your escapism like it should be you see what i'm saying mm. when you come up on this podcast that that shit shouldn't even be like a topic of conversation because this is your shit this is your podcast that fuck them you know what i'm saying so when you stop worrying about what the world has going on and you start putting some faith in yourself let me back up. I'm going to tell y'all the cards I'm pulling. So the first card that I pulled is this second house owning card, which is like, I'm like, you got to own yourself and own accountability. The second one is this Scorpio transformation card, because by worrying about other things, it's blocking you from transforming your businesses into what it needs to be, because you get worried about what the outside world thinks of you when really the outside world wishes they were in your position that's the real gag so it's like you know at what point do you just be like hey you know what y'all cool and all but i gotta focus on myself i can't put nobody on right now if y'all ain't reposting my stuff or i i at least see something once a month don't ask and that's okay because guess what now we're gonna start seeing who's really for you and who's not because people don't mind posting stuff you know what i'm saying like if they fuck with you but you gotta have faith in what you're doing okay this is the faith card because sometimes you doubt yourself for what reason i don't know anything you touch is gold you know i stay on you about that music like why i don't hear nothing Oh yeah, 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 I still ain't done no music. Yeah, I already know, and and I literally am like, bro, like, what's up with the beats? I know people who rap. I know people who look in for beats, all types of stuff. And Chris literally has like such a ear range for music, like sleeping on the bag. But that's another reading topic. We'll get into it another later date. The whole thing that spirit wants you to realize is you have to accept yourself as you are. You can't change yourself. You can change how you may go about certain things, but at the end of the day, you are who you are. You have to learn to love yourself. So once you learn to love yourself and be okay, like, hey, this is who I have to wake up with every day. This is what I have to live with every day. Like it doesn't get any more different than this. Your life will start being a little easier. You'll start having that balance that you're looking for because some days are good. Some days are bad, but it's like you need a balance of more good days. You know what I'm saying? I just need a For me personally I need a balance of The highs not being so high And the lows being so low I need the lows to be a little higher And the highs to To be be a little lower You know Not always I mean you know It's cool to have high highs And I mean sometimes It's cool for low lows But like for For me personally Like whenever I get in my head 
Like it don't That's just there all day It'd be like, really it might go extreme away, It go away for a second And then something Will bring it back Like it just happened Yesterday to me yeah. Like I was I was in my head I got out of it I was listening to a Funny podcast With uh, Country Wayne Country Wayne was on uh, Burt's podcast oh, Burt okay. Crusher So uh, I was listening to that I was in a good mood And then, like I had a conversation With my girl And I don't know Like I didn't understand What she was saying So like I just felt stupid Yeah And like I expressed that out loud Like damn I feel stupid Because I can't understand What you're saying to me Yeah And uh, Like I don't know I just that shit made me upset And then from there I was just like I don't know It was like a cloud over my head Yeah And then I got out of it But It, it, it didn't go away All the way Today yeah. I woke up straight For real bro But like really I've, I've noticed for myself I just like I just need to Get up and get active Yeah Like it's the When I get up And I just be chilling As soon as I get up Yeah Cause I ain't working No job now bro And like Yeah I don't know bro I be I be having a lot of other shit going on aside from the podcast, and so a lot of times I get home and I just want to like, I just want to chill. Yeah. As, but at the end of the day, bro, like you're gonna get and like back to like what you were saying on the people like reposting and stuff. I feel like I get a fair amount of engagement. Yeah. But I get more engagement when I'm more active. Yeah. And when I'm less active, I get less engagement, and mm-hmm. that's simply just because I'm not popping up on people's feeds because I yeah. haven't been active. Like I, sometimes I go three days without posting, mm. and Instagram wants you to post yeah, every day, every day. So like the algorithm, I feel I feel like bro, like because I'm not putting no money in marketing or nothing, yeah, bro. I, have, I haven't ran ads or nothing, bro. This is all like organic reach, and I mean, whenever I be doing my spurts of mm-hmm. like being consistent, like I get, I get, I get more than expected feedback for sure. So like that, if I that that would be an internal problem. It's not, it's not an external problem right now at all. I feel like I get a lot of love from the city, like uh, almost overwhelmingly to where I feel like <laughs> I'm not doing enough. Like motherfuckers is so like. <laughs> So preachy, like how how important this is, yeah. And like it just makes me feel like, damn, bro, like I'm slacking for real. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, here, like, like back to this faith card. Like you gotta have some faith in yourself. Like I told you, you are like literally planting roots in the city that nobody has taken the risk to do, and it's all about risk taking. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. You need to get off your ass. The people are waiting. You see, I had to tell you, like, we need a female on here. It's so many females out here doing their thing. We have to hold it down. Yeah. Pushing the man to new heights. Uh, You ain't cat. You ain't cat, man. Right. Our last card on here is the benefits card. Benefits are going to come when you start having faith in yourself. Start accepting yourself as you are. Stop worrying about outside opinion, what it's going to look like, who it reaches to, who fucks with it. The most thing that I have learned in business is strangers sometimes fuck with your stuff more than the people you know. And I know you have very supportive friends because we have a lot of the same friend group. You know what I'm saying? But on reaching people that you don't know, don't worry about that. Just put it out there. It's going to reach who it needs to. This really is about you getting out your ego or breaking through your ego and not letting it hinder you from getting where you need to go. So I'm always be here in the background making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Cause I enjoyed this, like just coming in, chopping it up with you. Like it's real nice, real homey, real clean in here. You know what I'm saying? Like you got a nice space. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I try to, you know what I'm saying? I try not to get too heavy, heavy. It happens. So my, my thought process be, I'm going to cut this music. Oh, my yeah, thought thanks. process be, uh, I'm going to cut out a lot of the, like, Oh yeah, no, yeah, I really thought stuff. I like turned it all the no, way no, down no. and it still was playing. It so was I, low enough to be background, oh, but like when I'm, I'm trying, trying to think like, it's just like the beat be there and I'm just like, ah, girls can multitask very well. I can but, read a book, listen to the iPhone and change a diaper all at the same time. Shout out to the moms too, out here being creatives. Cause that's the most gangsterous hood is parenthood. I will say that. 
Hey, shit. I am no G by any means. Proud to be. Right now, I'm screwed. Nah, I feel it, though, man. How, um, how do you feel like becoming a mother has uh, played into... Honestly, becoming a mom was like one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. There is no manual or handbook for becoming a mom or a parent or a dad. You know, I don't want to take that away from the dads. But being a mom, it's different because you had the baby. So it's a different type of responsibility that you feel walking around with a little human who's been kicking and eating all your food for nine months and like just raising them. Like you have to have a lot of willpower to do what you want to do. Even being a creative or doing hair, doing readings, like I have to make sure I schedule them in a time where it's applicable for me. But then that all goes back for me being accountable. I have a business and people to serve as well. So I was assigned this gift. It's more so, am I going to do it and complain about the situation that I'm in or where I'm living or how much money I have? Or am I just going to put the time in now to do what I need to do? So when I'm like 35, 40, I'm out in Tahiti sipping something nice because I don't put the work in. See what I'm saying? Not giving out A's for effort around here. I thought you could do that, but that's nobody gets anything easy around here. Nah. It's just life. So, no, nah, it applies to everything: yep. business, uh, parenthood, relationships, like everything. Everything's yeah. the same, bro. Like really, a lot of like a lot of times, I think it's either just misconception or just you're underestimating like how simple things are. Like yeah. everything works everywhere. Like communication improves business. Friendship, relationship. So, like, yeah, any category, like, really, it applies to everything. Like, right. I think everybody tries to have their, like, their friend, their friend life is different than their relationship. And then their business life is different. But if you just, like, just be yourself in all in aspects. Aspect, yeah. 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 Cause a lot of times I think we, we go off of what we think things are supposed to be. Yeah. Like, and a lot you, of code switching. Yeah, you think yeah. things are supposed to be just based off of examples you've seen, but that doesn't mean that those examples were correct. Right. And different things applies to different situations. Like I like to tell people all the time, life is really about taking the things you've learned and applying them when need be instead of freaking out. Yeah. And that's just has helped me. Like before I go off the deep end, I'm I'm like, okay. If I go off the deep end, what happens? If I don't go off the deep end, what happens? Like either way, like it's a consequence to either choice. I could either move through this and just be like, hey, it has to get done. Or I could whine, complain, moan and bitch about it the whole time and make it like a lot worse project than what it really is supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like either way, it has to get done. Going to do it complaining or you going to do it with a smile on your face. Yeah, because you complaining doesn't change that it happened. So no, you just gotta act accordingly and adjust. But yeah, man. So y'all, y'all, y'all seen this is for anybody who thought it was witchcraft or anything yeah. like that. You see my dog just very light work, and we didn't even get into nothing. This is very surface level. I do different types of readings. I do general readings. I do get to the bag reading so if you're having blockages regarding like increasing your money sustaining your money that kind of thing or even finding out what your purpose is I do readings for that I also do love reading so for people that have relationship issues going on you know we can talk about it it's cool this is a safe space and then I also do ancestral readings as well but the thing with ancestral readings is everyone's ancestors are not nice okay my ancestors don't play about me so with that being said if i don't feel like your ancestors are benevolent i will happily decline the service and offer you something else but it is available if you're interested so you know really i like to tell people readings are for if you just need clarity you know we are all one 
And so there is no reason why we aren't connected to the source to be able to figure out life problems. We have tools like this to help us make it a little bit easier on everybody. So what kind of reading was it that you just gave me? So we just did a kind of basic general reading, you know, just kind of like very surface level, nothing to, um, hey, I know you got this going on and I know you've been doing this and you need to cut it out. You right. need to stop. You so, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you, you referenced things you knew about me. So how would it be different for somebody you don't know? Like if somebody you don't know nothing about, they come around. I, I, when people who I don't know come around, like your friend. Um, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Like when Ben's did it. Yeah. Okay. I, I knew nothing about Ben. Yeah. I'd never seen Ben. Chris was Ben's, like. Uh, Ben's. Yeah. His name's like not Like a Ben's. Mercedes yeah. Ben's. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Ben's I'm so 47. sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, but you're good. You're when good. Ben's <laughs> came around, like I, I've never met him in my life. I had no idea where he was, but. I could just tell he was in a space of whatever he does, Jax is too small for him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was just the energy you know, he was giving <laughs> off. I was like, bro, you got to get out of town. No, like, and listen, he's been doing that, though. He's really? been going to Miami. He just went to Atlanta on a whim. And what? Yeah, like, so somebody he's been wanting to film for for a while he reached out to them and they were coming down to Atlanta for a show and he went and hung out with them. He was out there for like five days. Are you serious? And he he found out the day of that he had to travel and he just went. Like, he was like, fuck it. Yeah, he, I told him. To no, 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 no. Oh Ever my. since you said something, <laughs> he's been traveling, bro. No cap, bro. No I'm, cap, I'm bro. so happy for that. Yeah, I don't like to get, you know, too deep into it. But yeah, I told him, I was like, hey, travel i was like i don't even care if it's like a couple hours away like get out the city i yeah. was like because whatever you do yeah. it's not appreciated like it should be but it's people out there who gonna fuck with you you know what i'm yeah. saying so that makes me really happy i love doing readings hey. for people i don't hey, know go, you know what i'm saying yeah man shout out Benz. that's what's uh, up yeah. like that doing people that I don't know is honestly my favorite yeah. because it gives me a chance to really like test my skills. So the first like five people who hit C up after this and want a reading and I've never done a reading, I don't know you, I'll do it for free. Just tap in. Hey, hey, on that note, we're going to be right back. Hello. Duh. Duval County, baby. Hello. All right, y'all. We back. Thank y'all for tuning in. Again, I'm here with Kayla Duval Oracle 904. Yes. Cosmic main events. I had the main events in my head, but the cosmic, for some reason, that wasn't there like, yes. in my head. But I got it, though. I landed it. You did. Um, Main as in M-A-N-E. Like a horse's mane. Beautiful hair. Cosmic, because I get my color on. That's my specialty. I do nasty, nasty work with the hair color. Definitely self-taught, but any color, you know what I'm saying? I got it for you. I sell raw hair. I do have virgin hair if you're not trying to go that expensive route, but invest in your hair. I want to let you guys know I've had this hair since... 2019 this week mm -hmm. same hair like you know you got to wash it and do all that good stuff but invest in your hair stop walking outside looking any kind of way that's my psa for today so from somebody who knows nothing about this stuff <laughs> what does virgin hair mean because to me that sounds like it'd be more expensive okay so when you are working with virgin hair and raw hair um, when I order my hair, my virgin hair, it can come from maybe two or three different donors of real hair. That kind of messes with the hair pattern of things. So say, for instance, like when I make a wig and I have tracks because they come in bundles, okay? You undo the bundle. <laughs> 
I feel like you're talking to me like I I'm a child. I already know it's straight French to him. Okay, it's straight French. I got to break it down. Okay, you undo the bundle, right? And you have your hair on the bundle. When you look at the strands of hair, there may be long pieces. There may be short pieces. This can cause your hair to be frizzy or not lay down like the girlies like it to. So when you get raw hair, most of the time, or what it's supposed to be, is cut from one donor's hair. So that way when they lay it on the tracks, it's all going the same direction as far as hair pattern. So when you do your hair, it lays down. Y'all see how he's looking like, what in the world yeah, is she talking lie. about? I don't. This is it. But for my girls, though, I'm telling y'all, I'm holding it down. So just they're with me on this. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. So when you get that raw hair, it can last like three to five years. If you take care of it, wrap it up. Don't just sleep on your weave, ladies. Comb it. Take care of it. Virgin hair, I mean, um, raw hair will last you a very long time. So with my business, I'm just very detailed and quality oriented. So that's just what I provide because when you're buying your hair, I feel like is a woman, that's an investment. I started selling hair because my best friend, she died from cancer when I was like 13, 14 she lost all her hair, but she never put on a wig or anything like that. She wore a hat sometimes, but there's a lot of women who aren't comfortable wearing their hair. You know what I'm saying? And a wig or something like that is the only thing that can still give them that confidence without feeling like they're, you know, they're still beautiful and things like that. So I wanted to make it glueless for that reason. So we're not adding any more, you know, um, chemicals or like that to your scalp because glue is very bad stop using that it's so much in glue like if you get a, a bottle of hair glue and look at the ingredients there are none and that's the issue so we make glueless wigs so that way you could slide it on and then after you've had a fun time at the club and hanging out with your homegirls you go home and slide it off and put it back on the hair rack and put it back on and go on about your day. All right. This is going to be my last guy question. So <laughs> when you say slide it on, do you like fit it to the person's head? Yes. Okay. So okay. I take custom measurements in order to the average woman's head size is about 22 inches. So usually that's kind of like standard, but I have everybody. Who <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fact, I ain't gonna lie. The fact had me rolling. The average woman's head is 22 inches and it. Childish. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, in my head, don't. In my head. Huh? No pun intended. Okay. But I'm saying though, is that like around? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you meant like this way. No, like, I mean. I guess that's, yeah, okay, yeah, that's no. just the, I'm blow, me, dog. I smoke, I'm effing crying. I smoked in between segments, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had to take a little intermission. Okay, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> should have me geek, though. But okay, yeah. But I mean, yes, okay, so you get like a tape measure and you measure the circumference of their head. And usually it is between, a woman's head size is between about 20 inches and 24 <laughs> inches. <laughs> This is why I don't take him anywhere in public. I just want y'all to know I don't take this man nowhere in public. Hey, that's so cap. We go out in public all the time. Not not that much recently, but we've been out in public. We have a made it like a thing to like we're gonna hang out more outside of doing like business activities because we're friends. Like, but yeah, no, I will not. Acting like this, I won't. I just, I don't know, bro. I don't know why that shit, bro, when you started saying it again. I'm trying to give facts. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying I'm, to let the ladies know. I know, but I, for some reason, it's just making me. Yeah, so don't me. guess because, you know, some head sizes can be like 20. I just muted myself. You good. Go ahead. Okay, great. Because I'm sick of <laughs> Some head sizes are between like. 23 and a fourth quarter inches or whatever. So don't guess, get a, 
measuring tape, measure your head size. And then we, I make the wig on the sewing machine, which is a lot more efficient because if I were to hand stitch it, that could take me like two weeks. Well, and also probably like the pressure from the sewing machine just probably makes it more firm. Like yes, definitely. S- more stable. More secure. Yeah. For sure. And then after that, if you'd like for more extra added security, we add bands to the back, wig clips in the front and the back. So it's not going anywhere. My wigs have to be mosh pit <laughs> head banging proof. Because if my wig comes off while I'm head banging, I promise that'll be like the last rave I go to. <laughs> You'll just see the wig fly up on stage and I'm like trying to slide out. I can see a, a, <laughs> little, a little, little small white girl picking it up like, oh my God. Yeah, because they wear extensions. So theirs is installed a little differently. Yeah. 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 No, so for how long were you making wigs for yourself before you started doing it like as a business? I I first started out selling bundles only. So my um what was I doing? I don't know. I was on YouTube and I'm I was looking like trying to get into the hair of like because it's really bad weave out here and it should be a crime how bad the weave is. You know, I know you got to do what you got to do, but still. So I was doing some looking and researching and what my mentor, Temptist Nicole, shout out to Temptist. She actually traveled over to like China and India to hand pick her vendors who sell hair so she went over there she met them she figured out how they work how they make the hair how they sew it onto the weft all of that and she had a vendor list and I took a risk I paid five hundred dollars for that vendor list it came with like 10 different vendors of who sold hair overseas this was like 2019 I think I haven't had to buy a vendor list since I've never really had complaints with the hair, which is a really good thing. Like, I appreciate that. But I just know me being the person that I am and the struggles that I've dealt with buying my own hair. I don't want the girls in the city to have to go through that. You know, I want to be a reputable source that somebody feels comfortable to, hey, I could get my hair, get my wig done and get it installed all in the same place. And I've recently, like you said, I do locks. Um, I started doing that because my little sister has locks. And she was like, can you do my hair? Kennedy has always been a, can you do something for me type of person? You know what I'm saying? She's always pushed me to my limit to doing hair. So once I kind of started doing locks and things like that, I was just kind of like, I think this might be the thing for me. I started kind of taking more time into what I was doing And I kind of was like, I think I want to do hair. So that's how I transitioned from just selling bundles to actually going into doing hair by doing real hair. So I started back bringing, scratching the scalp because scalp and, you know, black people, it gets really, really stuck, especially like my guys. And so I'll scratch scalp, wash the hair and then retwist because these days all you hear is, Come with your hair washed and blowed. A lot of people don't know how to do that. That's what we're here for, you know? So I've really been trying to bring back old school ways of doing hair from start to finish. And I was like, you know, if I'm going to do real hair, I could probably just do wigs too. So it just all kind of meshed into one melting pot. That's what's up, man. My brother is like, weave, weave. That's the only thing going across his mind. Weave, 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 weave. <laughs> no, not even. I, I was listening to the story. Is What happens a lot of times is I I, I have to, I got ADHD. So when, oh, I, when I can finally shut off the thoughts in my head. Yes. 
I'm stuck on because I'm got all my focus towards what you're saying. Yes. And then when you, I see you coming to the end, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta uh, like, Tap out. I gotta snap back yeah. into like, uh-huh. oh, you're you're interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> you are the host of this show, sir. So, do you have any bundle packages with the reading and? Hair. So you want to know something I was definitely thinking about doing. And I think I might tap into this. When you come to the website, I'm going to ask you a series of questions based off like a reading type of ordeal. Based off the way that you answer those questions or like even say for instance, like, okay, say if I have like a Scorpio come to my page and I make like a line for like um, a line of wig that brings like Scorpio energy, something like that, you know, or like maybe like a wheel of fortune type of thing. You know how like you go on the page, click it and yeah. like do like a wig suggestion or something like that. I've been trying to tap into it, but it's like people are OK with the weave. They're still a little apprehensive about the readings. You know what I'm saying? So I think that might be a good idea because that might be a way to kind of like introduce both. Yeah. And they could kind of, you know. I say, I would say like, because, you know what I'm saying? This technically, like it don't cost you anything. Mm -mm. You could promote, you know what I'm saying? The hair with the purchase of the hair, you get a free reading type deal. And then that way somebody who maybe hasn't heard of it or has been like pushed away from yeah. it. They might be more like, Oh, well it's free. You know, I'll check it out. Yeah. I'll see how it is. It'll kind of give them the option, like a yes or no thing, because you know, with readings, like it definitely can get energy draining. So say for instance, if I got like 500 orders and then I got to do like 500 free readings, like I think that might be a little buff, but I guess that goes back into putting the work in, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit. But do you, would you do, or do you do like virtual readings too? Like just over like a uh, video chat or only in person? Um, so I, I would prefer in person readings because the energy I can actually really tap into the person, but I could do readings. I do a lot of them over FaceTime. Um, I don't know. I really don't like people in my home space and I'm home most of the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I-, I could do it over FaceTime. That's cool. But like, if I know you and I'm like, I can vouch for you, like you could definitely pull up at the house, get a reading and we'll chop it up. We'll laugh together, cry together. But I've even done text message readings. Sometimes I'm feeling high in energy and I'm like, Hey, I'm doing free readings. Just send a DM if you want one. I'll do like a card or two pool. Just like, hey, man, you need to get your shit together. You know, or, hey, you're doing a good job. Keep going. In yeah. my Larry June voice. So, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I know personally, you know what I'm saying? Some of the people, like you said, Larry June, Currency, um, so like what what do you listen to in the rap world? We've gotten kind of into the the dub world. Okay. <clears throat> um as you guys may like Chris said, Spitta is definitely my favorite who I like to listen to. Um my second favorite after that is Rob Banks. Um for those who may or may not know, that is Shaggy's son, Mr. It Wasn't Me. Um <laughs> And um, I listen to a lot of um, I've been listening to a lot of like Detroit music lately, a lot of Rio and um, RMC Mike. You know, it gets a little treacherous when I get in my rap vibes. Who else do I like to listen to? Um, Freddie Gibbs is cool. I like to listen to him. I've been listening to... I've really been listening to a lot of dubstep lately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's. Yeah, I'm man. I think, bro, it's definitely somebody else who you. Uh, who I'm like. You tapped into. I which forgot. is crazy because let me tell you about what Apple Music did to me. This is such a sad story. Oh, boy. 
I had Apple Music that had, I'm talking about the best of the best of the best of the playlist on there. I'm talking about this has been my Apple Music since Apple Music, Apple Music. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I really want to find my own music. I wasn't paying Apple Music, okay? I got tired of them hitting me with the random $11.99 when I had a student account for like $5. They switched mm-hmm. it up on me. I was like, okay, I'm going to pay for Apple Music. Go. Like in sync. Not there. But it wasn't in sync. It was gone. So now I have to make like an entire new Apple playlist. And I'm just kind of like. Not feeling that. <laughs> Let me see. I can tell you who I've been listening to. <laughs> I really have beef with Apple Music right about now because I don't know. Okay, so when I go down my playlist, Rob Banks, Spitter, <laughs> more Rob Banks. There's some Saw Baby on here. Um, Kennedy was listening to this guy named V's. He's pretty oh, cool. Oh, yeah, V's, duh. Yeah. Get mm-hmm. off my dick, little bitch. Yeah, what, what he said. And um, I got some Pee Wee Longway on here. Yeah, it's some great stuff. Indigo Child Rick. I don't know if you guys know who that is. But if you go to the top of my music, they're suggesting Rio the Young OG. So I'm very. <laughs> I'll fuck with Yachty when Yachty be on the Detroit sign. I love Yachty. He's not with him on the Detroit sign. I saw Yachty when he came here in Jacksonville. I didn't appreciate it back then, though. He was still young and. I was very much, where were we? Mavericks? I think Yachty came to Mavericks. Yes. Yeah, I think that was before he was like fucking with like street rappers too. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because I think I remember him coming. I was like, I ain't going to fucking Yachty show. Yeah, no, I definitely went to that. Yeah, Yachty started linking up with Future and Mm -hmm. like. Once he oh, started okay. getting getting up on the on the scene with the with the trappers, Brad, like mm-hmm. Yadi said, Yachty, let me get in my rap bag. Yeah, now nah, Yadi Yadi be snapping sometimes He's for real. Nasty. They they have like this one thing on YouTube. I think it's the on on the creek or on the block or something like that like he's literally rapping on like a crate and yeah. he is like going ham he's on like, like a gucci suitcase or uh, yes. it's called something else it's not a suitcase it's for like the crib um, yeah he was spinning man, what's straight cars it's like it's like a storage box almost not a crate is it yeah i don't know i think that's what it is it's big as fuck though yeah, yeah it really I, I was like he about. can sit on it he looks like he's a pretty big dude yeah uh, the first uh, like of that era, like the first one that I really like got into was Uzi, and oh. I I seen Uzi when he came here, uh, before he dropped uh, I don't know what the album was, but the shit with Do What I Want on it, he pr- he premiered Do What I Want at the Florida Theater. Really? Yeah, for the Double uh, XL Freshman Where Tour. Where was I when Uzi came? Because he I. I've been a, like, Uzi fan, like, since Motorola Uzi. You know what I'm saying? Because I was out there listening to the Slim K Purple Children uh, Slow Down mixtapes, and that song was on there. And I was like, man, this is really hard. And I was like, okay, I need to hear this a little sped up. And then, like, after that, that's when he dropped Love is Rage, I think. And it was just from there. So... I'm like, I told you earlier, like, I'm hard on Uzi. Like, if I hear it, it better, it better hit. I expect great stuff from that. That's thunder? Yo, did you hear that? Damn. I thought somebody was banging on the door. Dog, that sounded real, um. Let me see. Spooky. You might want to check that out. I was saying it was looking like it was going to rain earlier, though. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we can't say that man name like that because I definitely heard that. Ooh. We talking about Uzi to <laughs> fucking start thundering with the clear skies. I don't even know. You, you, you know, might want to scratch that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. They say little Uzi Vert, like you say it too fast. It's, 
Lucifer. Okay, for real. You know, they be out here oh, trying to get God. you with that music they suggested to the oh. churn, Lord. <laughs> I, was th- I was thinking about that the other day, though. That, uh, like, music definitely has influenced, influenced like, my generation, bro. Yeah. Like, everything people do, like, from drugs and how you dress mm-hmm. and, like, what's, what's like, uh, important, like, what's valuable. Yeah. Like, and, like, material items and stuff like that. Definitely. And people will try to say it's not, bro, but, like, it's part of, like, the world, too. Like, the world is materialistic. But music really, like, I can say for myself, like, I started smoking weed because, like, it was cool to do in rap songs. And, yeah. And, like, it made me want to smoke weed, like. Exactly. Was, I bought Slim Thug's album, uh, Already Platinum, his, his first album. And on that song, he got a song, I Love You, Miss Mary. <laughs> he talking I'm not going to play with you. He talking about weed. Okay. So, you know how many songs, like, we heard and they done called a female Mary on there and we don't even know who the hell they was talking about when they was kids and we got uh, older. We were like, that's who they talking about? Oh, y'all were slick. <laughs> y'all slid that in there real nice. <laughs> so you say you went to Bethune. That's in uh, Daytona? Yeah, man. Shout out Daytona Beach. That was a wild time. I had fun in college, though. I mean... Money wise, they tax the girls pockets. <laughs> okay. Don't suggest it. Wouldn't do it again. But for the experience and the people I've met, because I like truly have lifelong friends that I've met um from Cookman, I would definitely go to college again. But like just to say, like I'm established and I want a degree and things like that. No. Now my degree is in psychology and I feel like it's definitely helped me out with my readings, dealing with people, being able to kind of read people, that kind of thing. But I would have got a trade. I I have an independent insurance adjuster's license. I've made more money with that than I have my college degree. That's crazy. Yeah, shit. I only paid two hundred dollars for that license, y'all. Yeah, really, really, like college should just be just like trade school. Like it just should just be for people who have specific like, doctors, when, lawyers, nurses. Yeah, like I don't know, bro. Like it, the broad aspects of college is just so, and then they just make you take math courses and English courses and shit, bro. Like you should just from day one, it should be about what you're getting into. Right. That way, if you could see from the jump, my like, odd, oh, this ain't for me. Versus you yeah. got to do a whole year of nothing to do with what you're trying General to do with your life. courses. Yeah, bro. And in school, you know, fucking school, the public school system is set up to, you know what I'm saying, have you have you living your life a certain way. Because why are we not prepping in high school? Why are we not taking general courses senior year? Mm-hmm. So when you get to college, you're just like in their head first. I, I like, like, whenever I have kids, I'm going to be focusing on the Montessori learning. Yeah, like for sure. Getting them getting them where they move at their pace. Mm-hmm. Like if, if a kid's reading at a sixth grade level at the age of seven, then they should be reading sixth grade material. Yeah, like, exactly. I like, honestly feel like it's, my son is very advanced, you know what I'm saying, for three. Like, he's literally telling me exactly what he wants, how he wants it, when he wants to do it in full, complete sentences. So I try not to baby him. If he wants to do it, I let him do it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's how the world should be. But when we're growing up in school and they're trying to contain everybody to learn at a certain pace, of course, you're going to have people who aren't up to that standards like you're judging people as a whole, not individually the child. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. The the system is just designed to keep the system in power. And like I'm loving I'm loving the more entrepreneurship that's going on in the city. Like some people ain't meant to do that. You know what I mean? Like some people they're they some people are happy working nine to fives, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They're and cool that's with okay. it because like, we need we need those people yeah. to have the things we want. Like, if we want to be able to go to Walmart or Target or wherever right. to get whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes right. I, I, I try to, I try to like not 
get caught up in the whole like, oh, you're supporting Monopoly. Da, da, da. Yeah. I do it because Walmart got the same shit that other places got, but it's cheaper. Right. And it's better for my pockets, bro. Like, right. I don't that think part. about it like, oh, I'm supporting this. Like, I, I'm not at a point in my life where like I have enough dollars to think my dollars are going to make an impact on a multi billion yeah. dollar company. Like, that shit. I don't know, man. Which is crazy because that goes back to like what you were talking about earlier is people being like very materialistic and stuff like that. I was literally reading a book the other day. They were like, most millionaires shop at Walmart. They're not into that materialistic stuff. Like literally Walmart is cool. Like I get it. It's a monopoly and things like that. But y'all know y'all still be up in Walmart shopping, getting y'all clothes, groceries. I don't get groceries from Walmart, but. Y'all know y'all be up in Walmart. Don't be out here flexing like you too good for a Walmart visit. Yeah, no nah, shit. The Walmart <laughs> in St. John's County, nice. That shit nice yeah, as fuck. Right. I was in there be like, damn. It just gives me anxiety because it's so big and it's so much stuff and it's cold as fuck It is there. cold. It is cold like, enough. Uh, <laughs> they got them smooth ass carts though. The bitches, them bitches oh, yeah. roll effortlessly. They WD-40 them bitches daily. Man, what? Ain't no do 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 but shit, you got uh, you got anything else you want to leave leave on with the people? Um, now that was thunder, right? That was there. a big thunder. Yeah, that was a big one. Um, I appreciate you having me on. Um, like I said, the first five people that slide in my DMs, I will give them a free reading. Um, just follow me at Duval Oracle nine hundred four. That's my reading page, and my hair page is Cosmic Main Events. That's Main as a horse's mane, M A N E events. All that's on Instagram. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank y'all for tuning in. We out this bit. Duval County, baby. <laughs>